that brings me to another topic I wanted to discuss uh, that's controversial and um, related to, to Elaine. Um, you know, before before I started following you and that I met Av and et cetera, I was a basement grower and I kept everything secret. It was just my own little personal uh, passion. So anything that I knew, I just researched on my own. And basically all I know, all I knew was Elaine Ingham. So I, I remember her saying that there was no such thing as testing soil pH because she explained how, uh, just like you said, the, the plant controlled pH. Um, so for years and years growing, um, I just never tested my soil pH. I never tested my water pH, nothing, nothing, nothing. Um, and Little did I know the water I was using at my house was perfectly neutral and actually very good water. So I was getting very good results. When I built my uh, licensed facility and I moved there, I did a little test grow with the equipment that I was going to use, see how things were going. And I had the worst grow of my life. Disgusting cannabis, like really like major letdown. I was like, thank goodness that I did a test grow before going all in. And what I discovered was that I was using well water with a ton of minerals in it that I didn't know what minerals they were. All I did was a heavy metals test to make sure it wasn't contaminated with the arsenic, arsenic, lead, cadmium, or uh, mercury, which is what we test for in cannabis. Um, but that being said, it was there was a ton of minerals and the pH was over 9.0. So that really opened my eyes. Oh my God, okay. Water matters, pH clearly matters. Um, so since I, I've built my beds, uh, we've discussed it. I've been testing uh, soil pH too, along with, uh, of course, water pH. Um, and I'm finding out that my A horizon has a significantly different uh, pH than my E horizon, uh, than my O horizon. I, I apologize. So I guess what I'm getting at is what are your thoughts on this whole thing that uh, my interpretation anyway of Elaine's view is that soil P there's no such thing as soil pH because there's trillions of pockets of different pHs. But when you send soil to the lab or when you uh, even buy a pH pen and you test your soil pH, you can come up with a very precise soil pH. So what's the deal with that? Like <laughs> from tr trillions of pockets of different soil pH to one pH. So, so I want to answer that real easily. It's called redox. So, right. Olivia yeah. Hosan, yeah. yeah, Olivia Hosan brought redox to the masses. What is redox? Redox is the relationship of pH to EH, and it has to do with photons and electrons. So, it gets deep really, really fast. All right. So, Elaine is often rigid in what she says, and there's a reason because she is a scientist and she is a public figure, um, constantly coming under scrutiny and attack from the chemistry companies that don't want you to even think about biology. I mean, in, in college, in soil science, it used to be they didn't discuss biology. It was only chemistry and physical, sans so clay and organic. And a lot of times they didn't even talk about organic matter. It was like sand, silk, clay, chemistry. That's it. And recently, as of maybe five, maybe a little bit long ago, they have started offering some biology uh, classes in college at the collegiate level. But they're not like they're not like Elaine's. You know, they're 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 very primitive, uh, or or they're very advanced, one or the other. But they're not in the middle like Elaine. So. Yes, pH is an issue, uh, and so is EH. And if you read Olivia's, paper, uh, Olivia's papers, you'll see that he has created these diagrams 
um, that show you the sweet spot between EH and pH. And if you get to that point, then you see all of these other diseases outside of that point. You have fungal pressure, you've got hydro, uh, you got anaerobic pockets, you have all these different negative things. But once you get into that sweet spot, all of those go away. You don't have them anymore. So, so why is EH and pH regulating biology? You know, it, dude, it's a deep fucking rabbit hole, real, real deep. Like, I don't, you know, I, I love to touch on it because, like, even the even the smartest dudes I know, when we start talking about this shit, they go off the cliff so fast. It's really difficult for the lay person to understand. You know, unless you got a triple Pentium processor processor to keep up with the, what they're fucking throwing out. You get lost in the weeds so fast, it's not funny. Now you're just listening to someone going blah, 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 because you, you can't keep up with it. It's extremely complex. So I encourage people to read his papers. Um, he has an online course where he actually teaches it. Um, that's another great way to, to educate yourself on this very, very complex issue. But once you start to go down the rabbit hole, it's going to make set off light bulbs all the time. You go, oh, that's why that happened. Oh, now I get what this is going on or what, what's making this happen. So again, you know, it's, it's, it's up to, you know, the audience or whoever that, that wants to uh, go down that rabbit hole, but it's, it's a powerful rabbit hole. If you have the ability to understand it and if you have not have the ability to understand it, you have the ability to affect it, to, to push it one way or another. <laughs> but I guess the answer isn't uh isn't that uh, simple? <laughs> no, no. And, it, you know, and again, it goes like, I love Elaine to death. Elaine, I believe, truly still loves me. Although I do say controversial things. I, I've been saying for years, pH uh, plants change the pH. You know how many times I got laughed at for saying that? But I mean, it's obvious. It's obvious that they had to have the ability to change the pH. How were they going to mine these different minerals when they needed them? Yeah. Right?